Before we go any further, in light of the Newtown shooting, I found these comments by the House Minority Leader Steny Hoyer so over the top, and very little criticism, very little notice in the media, but it's important that I think we highlight it, especially in light of that shooting. Watch this. It is somewhat like taking uh, your child hostage and saying to somebody else, I'm going to shoot my child if you don't do what I want done. You don't want to shoot your child. There is no Republican leader that wants to default on our debt. Juan, I know you would never support something like that, but you would think, it, is there any little sensitivity here? Well, you should have <laughs> it. I mean, that example at this time? Yeah, I agree. Look, I mean, we don't need that kind of hyperbole right now, and I think the whole nation's kind of raw. It's the Christmas season over the death of so many children so tragically, but so we don't need it. But the fact is that Republicans, and I think this is Denny Hoyer's point, Republicans have been playing hardball, and I think that when you say the president hasn't made concessions, I think you're off base. I think the president has said, listen, it's everybody, 98% of Americans that he wants to give an, an extension of the Bush tax cuts to. 98%. And then he negotiated, said, I'll go up to 99%. It's 400,000. 400,000. So he lifted that rate. Then he said, wait, I'll obtain all wait. entitlement spending to the CPI. And that was going to, again, hurt entitlement, wait, wait, cuts wait, wait, in entitlement spending. Second. Wait, the, uh, here you have a major concession by John Boehner, which ultimately the Republicans weren't going to go along with. But he <laughs> said he would increase rates. He went to a million dollars. The president mocks him publicly and says, oh, I won. And then he says, oh, so he wants to give tax cuts to those that make $900,000 a year. Does that sound productive to you, Juan? Because that sounded like he was rubbing it right in his face the Sean, minute that he was willing Sean, to Sean, you negotiate. can't blame President Obama and the Democrats for the fact that Republicans, his own Republicans, abandoned John Boehner, took away his power to negotiate with President Obama, and pretty much went home, and they're still at home. I mean, you know, it's unbelievable. Three quarters of the American people think compromise, hey, Juan, and compromise they includes the spending Wait, cuts they and the some bill. tax hikes. Can I get a word in well, here, guys? Brent Bozell, the Republicans passed a bill. <laughs> The Republicans passed it. The Senate Democrats haven't passed the bill in 1,300 days. You've got to be kidding me. No, it's, it's just... No, it's just much easier for the Democrats to sit and, and file their nails and say those awful Republicans, look at those awful Republicans go. No, the Democrats haven't done anything. Now, what is the opposition to this super tax on the greedy rich? Well, the Republicans have argued for 20, 30, 40, 50 years that high taxes stifle economic growth. President Obama said two years ago, when he didn't do this two years ago, he said the wrong thing to do in a bad economy is to raise taxes. Now suddenly both sides are considering doing exactly that. You've got three different studies that have shown that if you raise these taxes, you are going to kill somewhere between 700,000 and 1.1 million jobs. We wonder why we're in this mess. But Maybe all more. that notwithstanding, that has nothing to do with the issue. The issue has been, will continue to be spending. And that's okay. what no one wants to talk no, about. No, uh, wait a second, Brent. Everybody wants to talk about it. I mean, everybody says we got to do something about spending in this country. Today, the Treasury Sec Secretary Geithner came out and said, you know, we're going to approach, uh, you know, the debt ceiling uh, much more quickly than we had anticipated. So everybody, Republican and Democrat, and I was just saying to Sean, here's the president saying, We've got to do something about spending. Simpson Bowles was asking for two billion or something in tax hikes. He's down now to I think 1.2, saying we got to do something in terms of limiting the rate of growth by chaining the CPI Simpson Bowles to entitlement years. spending. Look, but one, but one. Here's the problem with everything you just said. It's just lovely rhetoric. It doesn't How's mean it a blasted thing. You've got a but you've got revenues of two point yeah. five trillion dollars entering the treasury. Folks, understand the size of that. That's two thousand five hundred billion dollars. And we're being told we can't live off that. We need right now we're spending three point six trillion dollars. This is insanity. Someone has got to have the backbone to come up with specific cuts. Stop talking about how we need to cut. Right, come well, up with the cuts. Stay right there. The Republicans we're, we're, aren't much better than the Democrats. Break. Well, I'm going to ask you about that when we get back, but we are taking a sledgehammer and robbing our children blind and stealing from them. And the fact that very few people are talking about it 
is one of the reasons that I think we need people of principle in Washington. We'll come back. We have more with Juan and Brent right after the break. Also tonight, Michelle Malkin and Charles Krauthammer. Welcome back to Hannity. We continue with Juan Williams and Brent Bozell. All right, so Juan, let me see if I understand this position, your position well. Okay. So the Senate doesn't do their constitutional duty for 1,300 days. They don't, they don't pass a budget because they're too gutless to pass a budget. They don't oh, want to put it on, on paper. The president... Last, the last week is playing golf, 18 hours on the golf course, more than I've spent in a year. Okay. Then, all, and he's now holding the line, if I have this straight here, what, for what amounts to eight and a half days of government spending, he's willing to raise everybody's taxes and hold the con country hostage over the issue and the economy hostage because he so wants his rate increase for eight and a half days of spending? Tell me what, where, where the sense in that is. You know, I don't you know, see it. You know you're, 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 I'll give you this. You're strong on principle, Sean. But, Sean, let me tell you something. You are way, way out in line with the thinking of the American people. It's something like 60% now, I think it's in the mid-50% of Americans who approve of President Obama's handling of these budget negotiations. The president cut his vacation Where's the short. Criticism how the how much do you want him to do? Three years. I mean, and you talk and you talk about the Senate hey, let, let doing me, nothing. Let me, let me the that. Senate has passed the bill that would give an extension of the Bush tax cuts to 98% of Americans, Sean. 98%. John Boehner, a guy I like very hey, much, but John Boehner's me. ratings are now lower than Nancy Pelosi's. That's what the American people think about the way Republicans the are behaving. The Senate hasn't done their job in 1,300 days, and somehow, Brent Bozell, the blame is on the Republicans who did pass a bill, and President Obama, of course, the media in love with him, bows oh at his gosh. altar. There's been no criticism of him either. Well, look, look um, uh, I disagree on two points. One, number one, where the Senate is concerned, let's also keep in mind this. The Republicans in the House have passed hundreds of bills that have never seen the light of day because every single time Harry Reid refuses to bring them up for a vote in the Senate. So for this man to turn around and say that the Republicans are dilly-dallying when it's the Republicans who have been showing up for work in the House for two years and he's done nothing is, is abominable. Secondly, to the President, yes, he's playing this very well, Juan. He's politically, he, this is a masterpiece on his part, but it's also a complete obfuscation. I go back. It has nothing to do with the taxes you're talking about. It has everything to do with spending. And Juan Williams, right now on national television, you tell me what Barack Obama has stood up and said he will cut to balance his budget. Well, I think he said that he would, in fact, chain our you know, rate of growth inflation in the country, the CPI, to many of his spending programs. He's talked about Medicare. In fact, Republicans have talked about a a eligibility age. We've talked in depth. Juan, double talk. Give That's me not specific. double talk. If you, if you limit the rate of growth, you will see that we will spend less money, Brent. That's what we want to the do, The quintessential right? Washington answer. Oh, it's the that? quintessential Washington answer. Now give me a specific. We've got $3.6 trillion in spending. That's $1.1 trillion above what we can afford. Right. What of the $1.1 trillion has the president recommended we stop spending money on? Sure. What we're saying here is that what you don't do is take a hatchet. What you do is you slow the rate of growth of these programs, Brent. That's the way you do it. You want, don't want seniors thrown out. Cut? You don't want people who words, need education denied that education. Zero cuts. No, it's zero not a cuts. zero cut. And again, we talked it's, about even John Boehner saying yes to, in terms of age of eligibility to get into Medicare. That's a major step for our country hey, in Juan, terms I'll of give you, reducing Juan, spending. I'll give you, Republicans are playing the same game. I'm not saying Republicans are squeaky clean on this. I think some of them are guilty as well. But no one has got the guts to do what everyone campaigned on. Everyone campaigned on restoring fiscal sanity and blah, blah, blah. No one's got the guts to do it. Let me add to Brent's point. Okay. Brent, you know, Juan said something to me a moment ago that I want to address. Juan, you said maybe, maybe I'm out of touch. Yeah. Um, maybe I am, Juan, but to me, it's immoral what we're doing by stealing our children's money. And Juan, I don't think we're able to pay it back. And there's nobody in Washington in this whole debate, and Brent Bozell is right, there are some Republicans as well that are just willing to make any deal to make this go away. Oh, but to gosh. steal from our children this way and smash open their piggy banks 
is a moral disgrace. And it's not, and it's not immoral to so crash the touch, entire economy. In other words, to say, oh yeah, Wall Street, go crazy, global economy collapse, and say, oh yeah, we well, did it be because Obama's we stood choice. on There's principle a bill to pass. and raised taxes the on everybody because we stood on principle. That doesn't help our children, Sean. Juan, the Repu dude, Wait, dude. Juan, the Republicans passed a bill. The Bush tax cuts, which have been law for 11 years, can continue. That's up to the president well, and Harry Reid. Ninety-eight percent. If they just say yes to what the president's offering, ninety-eight percent. In fact, it's up to ninety-nine if you go up to the four hundred thousand. Well, but 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 the president well, made fun and mocked Speaker Boehner oh when he goodness. when he said, "Let's do it at a million. And the president but, said, "Oh, but, but you're, one, you're just one, supporting one, those you're, that make nine hundred thousand. The president. Yeah, that's but, not but negotiating. We're back to talking Sean. about what doesn't matter. Juan, you're I back to talking about what it. doesn't matter. It's not taxes, it's spending. Right. And I know spending. the comfort zone. The comfort right. zone of the left is to talk about the greedy rich who won't pay their fair share. You guys that have made your point. To do with this. I, I, I've had it hit into my head, but I wish you'd listen to the idea that compromise is not a bad word. Okay, okay, then fine. Let's well, all maybe agree the president on went, tax maybe, cuts for 98%. But, but how about we compromise on spending? No, well, then what are let's we lower cut? the rate Juan, of spending. If we don't reduce... If we, Juan... I have a plan. I like the Mac Penny plan. You cut one penny out of every dollar after you freeze spending for six years, and we'll balance the budget. Washington is incapable. It's a drug. It's crack cocaine. It's heroin, all wrapped up in one to them, and they refuse to do it because their power is predicated on it.